All right, so this time we're going to be prepping the patient correctly before we place the electrodes, uh, ensuring that the electrodes are pushed down uh, for a good second each time they're in place. This will heat up the gel using the practitioner's finger and allow the gel to become fluid so it's able to move into all the micro crevices on the patient's skin gives a lot better trace and a lot bit better adhesion. So once you've applied the alcohol wipe to the patient's skin you need to allow it to dry because the electrodes won't stick effectively to any alcohol soaked skin. So the electrodes that we're going to place on the patient now have been in the practitioner's pocket for about a minute so they've warmed up. Uh, they should be fairly close to ambient temperature. And to correctly place them on the skin, they should be put into position and then pressed down for a good second while swirling. This pushes the gel right out over the full surface of the contact area of the electrode. It will take a little bit longer to put the electrodes on, but the resulting time that you save trying to correct bad lead artifact or baseline wander uh, means that you're saving at the other end. If you have an electrode that's not sitting properly, loosen the cable and twist the banana plug so that the alligator clip is then able to sit flat against the skin. This will prevent the alligator clip from lifting the electrode from the skin and breaking contact. If you find that the patient has their arms hanging off the side of the bed or the the treatment table, it's possible that the patient could be trying to hold their arms up, which will introduce muscle artifact. So can you just please clench your, hold your arms up a bit, yeah, just hold it up, yep, perfect. Now, if you now move your hands, so it's sitting under the under your bum, yep. If it's comfortable for the patient, you can always ask the patient to just gently sit on their hands, uh, if necessary, to stop them from falling off the treatment table, as long as their arms are not in contact with the upper part of their torso so you don't create a short in your electrical circuit you should be able to uh, alleviate any muscle tremor as the patient's arms are now fixed. Let's just have a look at the trace. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. yeah that, that makes such a difference. 
Okay. Another example is if a patient is uh, is tall. You want to hang my feet over? Um, they may be hanging off the bed. They may be having their uh, legs in an un unnatural straight position where it's more comfortable for them to have a slight bend in the knees. If you just straighten out your legs a little bit, yep. Again, you see you've got baseline wander, you've got a lot of muscle tremor. A good way to alleviate that is to place a pillow underneath the patient's knees. A low pillow to give it a more natural body shape. And then the patient is not going to be feeling inclined to strengthen, to straighten out their legs. So once we've got the, uh, the previous screen being refreshed on the ECG, you'll see that that ECG is pretty goddamn perfect. And this is the result of a properly prepped patient. To alleviate mains filter interference or mains interference, 50 hertz interference, it's always a good idea to record an ECG with the power disconnected. So the ECG is running on a battery.